What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, just finished up watching WrestleMania Night Two, man, and I, I have to say, I definitely enjoyed Night Two better than Night One. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's my personal preference here. Night One was okay for me, and I, I know a lot of you guys were, you know, really loving Night One, and uh, some of y'all couldn't understand why I didn't have the same feelings and sentiment as y'all, but. For me personally, Night One just had a lot of filler matches that I just wasn't really invested in, nor did I wanted to see or care about. But for Night Two, the, a lot of matches on this night, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of matches on this night, I was definitely more invested in, and I was just you know more excited to see you know the outcomes of these matches. You know, there were some matches I didn't care about, but ultimately I enjoyed Night Two more than Night One. Um, we're gonna we gotta talk about the main event. Um, one of the best main events <clears throat> I've seen in a while. Um, we're going to get to that at the end of the review. We're going to go in order from the notes I took. But yeah, man, that main event definitely was what I wanted and more. So we're going to get to that. But I appreciate all the love and support, man. WrestleMania is done. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens on Monday Night Raw and the rest of the wrestling week, uh, this upcoming week. So let's get right into it. Um... I wasn't really able to watch this match at home. Like, I was kind of watching it while I shouldn't be doing this while driving, but I kind of had it playing on my iPad and my iPad with me. So I was watching it through my iPad. So I couldn't really get down and invest it into this match. But <clears throat> I will say, The Fiend versus Randy Orton being the first match I was okay with. Um, the Fiend's entrance were pretty cool. I figured they were going to do something interesting for his entrance. It was really cool for him to come out of the Jack in the Box. And, you know, Alexa Bliss is rotating the Jack in the Box and he pops out. And, you know, it was a cool imagery. Randy Orton entrance was cool, as always. Uh, it was just good to see the crowd there. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, The Fiend attacking Randy off the top of the Jack in the Box. I thought that was interesting, too. Of course, you know, with The Fiend, he does a lot of no-selling. Randy Orton hit him with a backdrop on the table, on the announce table, and he just popped right back up and applied the mandible call. So more or less what we expect from The Fiend. Um, <clears throat> that's pretty much how the match was going. It was looking like The Fiend was going to win. He was going to hit Sister Abigail. And all of a sudden, Alexa Bliss pops out on top of the jack-in-the-box. Like dark blood is oozing or dark goo is oozing from her face and she's just looking at the fiend. The fiend's looking at her and he gets distracted and he ends up getting hit with an RKO, one, two, three, and the match is over. The fiend loses and I'm confused. I know you guys were confused. I don't know what the hell was going on. I was like, wait, he just lost. Like what? So, all right, why? What did, what happened to Alexa Bliss? Why? I'm confused. And then after that, the lights go out and they both disappear. And people started booing because it, they they were like, what the hell is this? Like, come on now. Honestly, this feud has been going on for how long? The Fiend's been off TV for like a few months now almost. And he, you have him come back to lose off of the distraction by one of his accomplices. And then they just disappear into the WrestleMania night. Like, what the? What the? I don't, I don't know. His character is cool. <clears throat> His character is cool. But I think just stuff like this doesn't what? I don't I don't know what the hell is going on here. I don't want to see the Fiend and Randy Orton feuding anymore. So I don't know what's about to happen next. I don't know who he feuds with next. Honestly, I'm just like, I right, I guess. Whatever. But like I said, it was cool for what it was. It's just that ending was kind of weird to me. So Alright. Shayna versus Naya. Uh, not Shayna. Shayna and Nia versus Natal uh, Natalia and Tamina for the women's tag team title. Uh, I put in my notes. You may not like this. I still don't care for this match. And I didn't care for the match. Was it? Did I watch it? A little bit. I was watching a little bit. But it was just like I didn't really care because I don't. I feel like the women's tag team division is really. It's, it's shallow as one. It doesn't really lack any depth. And I feel like. I, I'm I'm like I, I can't really get invested in it only because I think the hand fewer wrestlers like these teams they seem so put together and you know they don't really seem for me personally believable that they can be champs. I mean, 
the way it looks, Nia Jackson uh, and Shayna Baszler may be holding those championships hostage for a while because I don't see another legitimate team beating them unless they drop it to somebody in NXT, but the NXT has women tag team titles. So I don't know. I just didn't really care because um, I just didn't really care. Hey, man, that's just my personal opinion. This was, I tried to give it a chance. I was watching a little bit of it, and I was just like, I'm bored. You know, so I, I just I didn't really pay too much attention, but I took a little bit of notes. Uh, mainly just my personal thoughts. Uh, I also, I said Shayna should really be going for one of the women championships. Um, like she should. Shayna should have been a a, a at least a a multi time women's champion on Raw or SmackDown. I'm just be honest with you. She. Like, she can actually go, and she's believable, and she looks like she would kill you. you know, like she was in NXT. Uh, why were both Natalia and Tamina just looking at Nia from the second rope, waiting for her to jump off? That was mega cringe to me. Because it just looked like Nia's trying her best to climb up to the second rope. And they're just looking at her like, what is she about to do? Whoa! No, bro. All right. I was like, all right, man. I, I don't care. And uh, Naya and Shayna retain the titles. Okay. Cool. I still don't care. <laughs> hey, man. Like I said, some of y'all really get emotional and feel some type of way when I say I don't care about certain matches because I don't watch them regularly on Monday or Friday. Hey, guess what? I don't watch NXT regularly, and I find myself enjoying NXT and their takeovers a lot more easier than the main roster stuff. Because at the end of the day, I like the in-ring wrestling. I did not, I don't really care too much about Natalia and Tamina. Even though I know Natalia can go in-ring wise, I just don't care too much about that teaming. And I feel like, I feel like Shayna Baszler should be doing her own thing. Me personally, I think she needs to be at some point soon, hopefully this year, an actual singles champion because she's Shayna Baszler. She can legitimately hurt a lot of those women in the in that division, like legitimately, not even no no kayfabe stuff, like actually hurt them physically. But hey, to each his own. I just didn't care for this match. It is what it is. I understand it has to be on the card because all titles are being defended at WrestleMania. I just didn't care for it. So next, Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. Uh, I like this match. Uh, I enjoyed this match. Uh, the story is kind of the storyline kind of built up. Sammy basically saying, you know, there's a conspiracy against him in WWE, and it's cool. But I just always like their feud. Their feuds have always been pretty well, and it's good to see Kevin on the face side of things and Sami Zayn on the heel side of things. I uh, love the promo package for this match. It was pretty cool. It's cool to hear the crowd singing along with Sami Zayn. Uh, Sami Zayn's entrance music. It's been a minute since we've heard that, even though he's a heel. Crowd still was singing along to it. Uh, Sammy dancing to Logan's entrance. Logan Paul's entrance music was hilarious. Sammy's fucking a national treasure. Dude is goofy as hell. I thought that was funny. Uh, KO was definitely a crowd favorite when he came out there. Everyone was hype. Uh, that suplex to KO on the apron was pretty brutal. Uh, seeing KO take that. He looks like he dies every time. Anytime anyone does a suplex on the apron, it's just nasty, nasty, nasty looking. Um, I like the fact that the commentary team made fun of Michael Cole mess up from last night. He uh, basically called a certain move, uh, the Blue Thunder Bomb, I believe, but it wasn't that. And uh, he was corrected on that. And it was funny because they were making fun of him. Like, yeah, you kind of messed up last night, too. So I thought that was cool they was able to poke fun of him because he definitely did mess up last night. Um, uh, the nice exploder suplex to KO in the corner. He hit multiple ones, actually. That was pretty brutal. Um, at this point, I was saying they were putting on a good match because I was enjoying it. Sami Zayn was hitting a flurry of high-impact offenses. Um, and at this point of the night... This was my favorite match of the night at this point. I was enjoying this. The Fisherman suplex from the second rope to Sammy was very beautiful. And KO wins the match with the patented stunner, which I, I felt KO was going to win. And at the end, uh, 
you know, uh, Logan Paul's getting into it with Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn pushes Logan. Logan pushes uh, Sami Zayn. And then the crowd was asking for it. You knew it was coming. Logan's trying to celebrate with Kevin. And Kevin hits Logan Paul with a stunner. And I think all of everyone that does not like Logan Paul on YouTube, we all just rejoiced. I'm pretty sure he's probably a good guy. A lot of people don't like Jake, but it was just it was just good to see a Paul get stunned. So, hey, man, if you enjoyed that, I know I did as well. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, there was a little backstage segment with um, uh, RVD, the great Kali, and uh, Matt Riddle, and it was cool to see RVD, man. It was it was always good to see RVD. RVD is a unsung legend in WWE. I don't know how many people know the RVD chant. Like it's it's. When you see someone do it, you just instantly just feel like somebody's about to get hit with a a, a, a frog splash, man. Um, Samus versus Matt uh, Riddle for the United States Championship match was next. Uh, at first, I really wasn't interested in this match. I'm not even going to lie to you. But I was willing to watch it because I felt like they were going to put on a good match. And they put on a good match. I enjoyed this match. I really, really surprisingly enjoyed this match more than I did. See, you guys? When it's matches like this, where I may not even care about the feud, but if they put on a good show inside the ring, I'm willing to watch it. That's all I'm saying, guys. So, um, it was very stiff throughout the match. They they worked stiff. Sheamus and Matt Riddle, they're very stiff in the ring. The crowd was kind of quiet towards the beginning of this match. They were kind of dead at this point. Uh, they would, you know, ooh and all on certain high-impact moves, but it wasn't consistent energy. Not like the main event. That was consistent energy. Um, they started to come alive towards the middle and the end of the match. Uh, Riddle springboard off the second rope to take out Sheamus outside the ring was nice. Um, they botched a top rope white noise. Like, Sheamus was trying to get a top rope white noise, but he wasn't able to do it. So he ended up dropping down, glad that he didn't hurt himself, and he just... Ended up doing a white noise just, you know, on the mat. So, it was, you know, it was a noticeable botch, but they, they recovered it the best they could. Now, here is the, the – this was nice. This this whole this whole sequence right here was brutal in a nice way to end off the match. It, it unexpected. The bro kick to Matt Riddle off the second rope while he was doing like a springboard off the second rope. He catches him midair upside down. Right in the face, right to the lip, bro. And busted him open. Like, legit busting him open to win the match. I thought that was fantastic. You can see blood just dripping down his face. I was like, oh, okay. I like that. Honestly, I wish Matt Riddle would, you know, be, you know, he'd take, like, his character would be more serious. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's cool. You know, he's last the days ago. He's a bro. So, he's riding around on a scooter and stuff. But, you know, I would like for him to take things more serious. And that look he had, like, he was, like, pissed. I want to see more of that. You know what I'm saying? Because I know he legit can go in the ring, like, legitimately. Um, but it's cool. Sheamus as the United States champion, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And Sheamus is really an unsung hero. I forgot he was, like, a four-time world champion, like, a multi-time United States champion, a tag team champion. I believe he's an intercontinental champion. I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. But the dude... He's really done it all. He's won the Money in the Bank. He's won Royal Rumbles. Like, the dude is legitimately well-decorated in WWE and does not get the praise he deserves. So, shout-out to Sheamus winning, once again, the United States Championship. And he should have a, a decent range, man, a, a decent range. So, I'm looking forward to that. Um, Big E versus Apollo Crews in a Nigerian drum fight. I didn't know what that was, but I felt like there was going to be a lot of weapons involved. Now, unfortunately about this match, I saw some of it, but and I was actually interested in this match. But I was one of my homies called me. He was talking about some stuff we're trying to plan uh, in a couple weeks. So I literally got distracted. So that kind of sucked. I'm probably going to go back and watch it again. But... I did enjoy the parts that I did see, and that's probably one of the matches I will go back and watch again. But the parts I did see, I definitely did enjoy. It was hard hitting. Um, I did not know Big E was from Tampa, so hometown kid trying to uh, you know retain his Intercontinental Championship. Uh, they were go at the beginning of the match, they were just hammering each other with the kendo sticks. Uh, Big E hitting a Uranagi to Apollo on the steel steps brutal as hell apollo going in with the kendo sticks once again while biggie was on the ground in the, in the middle of the ring he was just hammering on him 
And then this is where the match was pretty much over right here. Like, I thought Big E was going to get the win, and obviously he would have got the win. But Apollo sets Big E on the, on the table. He's about to go hit him. Uh, he, Apollo goes to the top rope, and he crashes through the table because Big E moves out the way, crashes straight through the table. Big E picks him up, hit him with the big ending, and then all of a sudden he gets attacked from behind from this huge guy, and I was like, who the, who the hell is this guy? And then I, I, he let his face look familiar. I'm like, oh, that's the guy from Raw Underground, like the tall dude. He was like some tall dude, if you guys remember Raw Underground. He was some tall dude, and that's the guy that they, you know what I'm saying, aligned with uh, Apollo Crews. And you know what? Apollo wins because of, of the assist of whoever this monstrous human being is. And I'm okay with that because if Apollo would have lost, his heel run would have been pretty much done. No one would have cared because it's like, damn, you lost again and you're this newfound heel character. You got to get some heel heat. He has to get some momentum going off off of him to having his character change. So I'm okay with Apollo winning and I'm looking forward to seeing what feuds he has. I think this Big E feud is not over with. So it'll be interesting to see where things go. But Apollo definitely needed this win. Uh, they started doing, at this point, they started doing the, uh, the uh, you know, announcing the other half of the 2021 um hall of fame class and it was cool to see uh kane being inducted and coming out there and everyone you know showing him love and i was thinking i wish kane had his old theme music y'all know what theme music i'm talking about that uh, and the tables, bro. That I love. I, hey, that's the white side of me coming out. That's one of my favorite theme songs from WWE of all time. Just hearing that, like, bro. Then, bro, that's oh man. I'm getting. I'm probably gonna play this while I'm editing. That. I'm gonna play that song while I'm editing the video because it just gets you, get you amped up. I want to say, hold on. Let me find that the name of that song. I I, I know you guys are gonna tell me in the comment section, but I actually want to find it just for my personal self. Uh, I got to do this live. Let's do this. Kane theme song. It, it was like around 2003. Slow Chemical. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what it was called. Slow Chemical. Yeah. Uh, who is it by, though? I'm doing this live. I'm doing this live. I'm probably not going to be able to play it long enough because WW, well, I'll probably get copyright and a video will get blocked. I think this is it. I'm. Yep. This is his best theme music. Yep. This is uh, Slow Chemical, man. Oh, man. Yeah, this, 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 this brings back memories, man. I need to find out who is by again. I forgot. Okay, Slow Chemicals by Finger Eleven. Make sure. Yep, Finger Eleven, bro. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And it sucks on the original video, on the Slow Chemical original video. They turned the comments off or whatnot because I'm sure a lot of people was talking about, oh, Kane. Kane, yeah, Kane used, this used to be Kane's theme music, you know what I'm saying? I would have kept the comments on. I had to take time to talk about that because that's one of his best themes and one of the best themes for a wrestler in, in all of WWE. It would have been cool that he would have been able to come out, but I'm sure uh, Figure 11, they would have been, you know, trying to get some money off that, copyright reasons. So, yeah, but that was his best theme, hands down, so I, I had to mention that. So, next match, Rhea Ripley versus Asuka for the Women's Raw Championship. Very enjoyable match. I enjoyed this match and was looking forward to it. It was something fresh and new, and I was looking forward to it. Asuka taunting Rhea in her, na in her native language. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Asuka, you know, Asuka don't give no goddamn. She, she, she's Asuka, you know what I'm saying? The crowd was split between Asuka and Rhea, which is good. You know, people were invested in this match. Um... I wanted to ask y'all a question. Do y'all consider Rhea as a heel in this match? Because she was kind of doing heel-like stuff, like slapping Oscar, talking trash. I mean, granted, Oscar was talking trash, too. So I don't know if I would consider her a heel or maybe a tweener. I'm not sure. I, I didn't really consider anyone a heel in this match. It's just two competitors trying to compete. 
Um, they, you know, I just put in, the, uh, in my notes, I put they were putting on a good match. Oscar delivering a DDT to Rhea from the ring apron all the way to the mat down the floor. Pretty brutal. Um, at this point, uh, Oscar's trying to make Rhea submit. So she's putting her in multiple different submission holds and she's trying to make Rhea submit. Um, but ultimately, Rhea is, you know, they, they're focusing on her strength and power. She was able to overpower uh, Oscar and hit her with the riptide for the one, two, three. And I was surprised at the finish because I, I wasn't, I was expecting maybe Oscar to retain, but no, they gave the belt to Rhea Ripley. And I put in my note, notes, both, both newcomers from NXT, newcomers in the, in the women's div division from NXT, they win their respective championship matches. So we have new women champions and Oscar, I mean, not Oscar, and Rhea Ripley for Raw and a Bianca Belair for SmackDown. I think that's dope. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that is awesome. It's cool to see some of these NXT women talent get the proper, you know, somewhat of the proper, uh, you know, you know, spotlight they deserve. You feel me? So, hey, Rhea Ripley. Raw Women's Champion, I'm all for it, man. I'll be interested to see whenever Becky Lynch come back, how things will play out. Because you know Becky is trying to regain her top spot as the man in WWE. So, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, I also forgot to mention, um, the next segment is uh, Titus and Hulk Hogan coming back out at the beginning of the night. Um, Hulk Hogan and Titus came out to, you know, you know, introduce WrestleMania again and, you know, they're the host or whatever. And they were dressed up as pirates. And every time Hulk Hogan spoke, he got booed. They were just booing him. Just booing him to oblivion. Every time he smoked. And it was kind of the same thing here. They was booing him every time Hulk Hogan smoked. I don't know why Hulk Hogan's the host. Bro, I just don't know. That's just me personally. But it was cool Titus do his thing out there, you know. And then Bailey comes back out, and, you know, she's trying to promote herself and stuff. And I, I put in my notes, yo, Bailey is actually kind of thick. She was looking kind of thick out there, man. I'm like, all right, Bailey, do your thing. I know she's married too as well, but she's, you know what I'm saying, she's attractive. So I'm like, okay. I never knew Bailey was thicker than a snicker. Didn't I know that, man? So, uh, and then the Bellas come out. And I like Bailey. She said something. She's like, you know, John. She said one to one of the twins. Uh, obviously, the one that was dealing with John Cena. She's like, you know, John's not out here, right? That was actually pretty funny. I thought that was a good line. And then they they jump uh, Bailey, and they got booze. Because to be honest with you, no one liked the Bellas. Whoever, said, no one liked the Bellas. They only, no, I think they only really got over because of who they were dating. No one liked the fucking Bellas. No one still likes the Bellas. They, the, the Bellas, what did they, they are part of what WWE needs to get rid of, get away from. The Divas, they are part of the Divas era. All pretty, no substance in the ring. That's really what they were. No one can sit up and say, oh, I've seen a five-star Bellas match. Where? Where? No one can say that. They are part of the Divas era. So, when we are trying to get away from the Divas era and get into the actual women wrestling, putting on great matches, that's the era I'm trying to get to. And I know a lot of you guys are trying to be a part of as well. So, now we get to the best part of the night. This is the part of the night that I was just truly excited. I took notes, but I didn't take many notes. And I made note of saying... I'm probably not going to take many notes because this is the main event. And I, I just want to be able to watch this and enjoy. I'm going to go back and watch this match because this match was so great. Let's let's first start off with the promo package alone. Promo package alone. Fantastic. I did get to see all three of them spit promos on uh, Friday Night Smackdown. And they, they all killed it, especially Edge. Edge calling Roman Reigns uh, the Samoan Edge or something like that. Edge is, you know, yeah, he's the Samoan Edge. I thought that was nice, man. They all cut fantastic promos. That promo package was amazing. That, to me, is a WrestleMania caliber promo package. If it doesn't get you hyped, I don't know what will. Um, uh, Let's see. It was cool to see the Yes Chance at WrestleMania once again. But, interesting enough... 
Daniel Bryan wasn't the crowd favorite. This was the first time I've seen in a very long time a face Daniel Bryan not being the crowd favorite. He was actually getting booze. The person that got the most cheers was actually Edge. Crazy. Edge got a beautiful reception when he came out there. On this day, I see clearly. <laughs> like, he got a beautiful reception when he came to the ring. And Daniel Bryan got some booze. He got some yes chance. He got a lot. He got some more no chance. I remember how Daniel Bryan crowd reception was when he came to WrestleMania. It was nothing but yes. There was no no's. There was not one single no. It was just straight yes. When they chanted, when they called his name, it was straight nothing but yes. Now it was... He, it was 50-50 for Daniel. I was very surprised by that. And, of course, Roman coming out all stoic, all cool, not really worried. Straight heel booze. And this is what makes this great. Because for the longest, Roman has been getting booze as a face. He was getting booze because we didn't want to see him. We didn't want to see him on our televisions. Because we knew he was going to probably win the match. This is a different type of boo. This is this is a different type of heel heat. He's getting actual legit heel heat, not go away heat. He was getting actual legit heel heat because people wanted to see him lose. People paid money to see Roman Reigns lose, and I love it, bro. Oh my god, so great, so goddamn great. So, uh, let's see what what do I have in my notes, man. Oh, I also said, I don't know who wins this match, and I don't give a damn, because this match is great. So, whoever was going to win, I was all for it. It didn't really matter. The crowd reception for Edge was great. The first time we see a heel Roman get the right heel heat in front of a crowd was beautiful. Roman is that guy now. He is that guy. I love it. He's the reason why SmackDown is, is the way it is. Um... Roman went straight for Daniel Bryan as the bell rung, just blasting him with the forearm. And then Roman and Hedge start going at it. Then, of course, Uso was outside at the ring with Paul Heyman. So Uso gets involved when outside the ring, super kicks Daniel Bryan. Then he super kicks Edge as Edge falls out to the outside of the ring. And then uh, Jay Uso, he's causing havoc. He's basically causing some more havoc for, you know, he's, you know, he's pulling his weight from Roman Reigns. Crowd booing the hell out of him. And then uh, I want to say Edge starts going off on Roman on the opposite side of the ring. He starts throwing him against the ring, then the barricade, then the ring, then the barricade, then the ring, then the barricade, just back and forth. And then he attacks Jay Uso and hits him, planting him face first into the steel steps. They cart out Uso, cart him out. You know he's going to get back involved in the ring, in the match. Honestly, if I'm Daniel Bryan and I'm Edge, I legitimately, I take out Roman, have him laid out, and then I do my best to destroy Jey Uso. If I mean, I mean, put him in the in the yes lock, do something like hit him with a concerto to the steel, steel step, something to get him out of the ring where you know he won't be coming back for the rest of the night. So that's what I would have did. Um, let's see. Uh, Edge and Brian start teeing off in the ring. That was a nice standoff moment. They start throwing blows. Roman catches Brian outside of the ring and suplex Daniel to the floor, um, to the off mat floor below. They both went for spears in the middle of the ring, Edge and Roman, and they both hit each other. It was a nice little spot. Crowd loving it. Crowd chanting, this is awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm making note in my notes, this is is a WrestleMania match. You could not have this match anywhere else other than the main event of WrestleMania. The offensive flurry by Daniel Bryan. I was loving it. He was he was going in on everyone. It didn't matter. I was loving that part when he was getting some offense in. Roman going in with the elbows to Daniel Bryan was pretty brutal. You know what I'm saying? That was uh, that was nice. You know, he's just throwing them elbows at Daniel Bryan. Roman power bombs Daniel from the steps to the announce table on the outside ring, they had the steps set up. Roman, and at this point, Daniel Bryan has tried to tap out Roman. So Roman's getting pissed, throws him out outside the ring, and he power bombs him through the table. Nice little spot. And what made this great? The camera 
the camera work was perfect. He's just focused on Roman. He's talking his trash. And then you see out of nowhere, Edge spears him off the off the steel steps to the mat below, to the floor below. And it was beautiful. Roman selling it. I'm like, yo, this is a great, fantastic match, man. Uh, let's see. What's next? Then uh, I want to say so. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep up in my nose because, like I said, at this point, I'm just I'm I'm excited. I'm enjoying the match as much as possible. So I'm trying to keep notes as best as I can, but I'm not really doing a, a, a fantastic job at it. Um, Edge using the piece of the chair to make Roman tap. Now this segment was so 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 great, so great. So. Edge tries to bring this uh, a, a chair into the to the ring. Roman stops it. They start fighting over the chair, and then all of a sudden, Edge is able to get Roman in like a cross face. And it's funny because when they was fighting over the chair, a piece of the chair breaks off. So Edge picks up that piece while he has him in the cross face and puts it in his mouth and start wrenching back. I thought that was a beautiful visual, bro. Beautiful visual. Beautiful visual. Then, this is my favorite part of the match. I'm not even going to lie to you. This was such, oh my God. At this point, I was I was enjoying this for whatever it was. The crowd was hyped. I was hyped. Daniel Bryan comes off screen and applies his submission to Roman Reigns' other spare arm. So, both of Roman Reigns' arms is locked up. He's in a submission with Edge, and he's in a submission with Daniel Bryan, and there's nothing he can do. He's literally screwed at this point. They're both looking at each other, and then they both start headbutting each other. Why they have Roman in the submission, I'm like, yo, this match, easily one of the best matches out of both nights. I don't care what nobody says. This was great. Oh, my God. This was so goddamn good. So goddamn good, bro. Definitely getting this is awesome chance. Ah oh, man, this was this was great. So Edge almost wins this match. Edge is literally about to win this match, man. Uh, I I said Edge getting a steel chair is bad for everyone. He picks up the chair. He starts destroying Roman and Daniel, bro. Just laying them out with chairs, bro. And this is when it gets brutal. The rated R starts coming out. He's setting them up for both concertos. He hits Daniel Bryan clean with the concerto. Daniel Bryan's out. Daniel Bryan's out of the match. Like, honestly, he should have went for the pin on him because that would have been it. The match would have been over. So Daniel Bryan gets hit with the concerto. He's done. He's out. He goes to hit Roman Reigns with the concerto. Of course, Jay comes out of nowhere. Jay Uso attacks him. Then he starts, uh, Edge gets the chair, starts destroying Jay Uso, right? Starts destroying Jay Uso. And then Roman gets back up. He starts attacking Edge. And then he gets the chair, puts Edge head on the chair, and hits Edge with the concerto. Oh my goodness. Edge is done. Not only to add insult to injury, he drags Edge carcass, puts it over Daniel Bryan, and he pins both of them to retain the WWE Universal Championship. And I was like, yes, I am okay with that. That is how you solidify yourself as the best. He hit a double pin. He didn't just pin one. He pinned them both. Of course, with the assistant of Jay Uso. But it was great. And I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. This was fantastic. Sign me up. Sign me up. I, I, I don't know what to say other than this match for me. For me. I know some other people may disagree. This was a five-star match for me. The storytelling. The build up, the build up, was it made this match even more special. The fact that these guys went out there and busted their ass, they stole the show from me. This was entertaining as hell, and legitimately, all three, all all of them could have you know walked out as as champion. All three could have. You didn't know who was gonna win this, but ultimately, I'm okay with this decision. Roman Reigns retaining and showing the world why he is. 
the best in the head at the table, man. Fantastic. Love this match. This is a five five star match for me. Like I said. It's a five out of five for me. I love this match. I'm going to watch this match again. That's what makes matches five stars for me. If I can go back and watch them again, I'm actually going to do that probably either tonight or tomorrow. I'm going to go back and watch this match again. That's how great it was. So, and night two ends with Roman Reigns retaining his championship. I enjoyed night two. Definitely. Uh, Honestly, WrestleMania this year, I can rock with. They definitely need, need to go with the two night format. They cannot, they can't do this all in one night. They can't. Because they, they have too many titles, the show's too big. They need to do a two night format. They need to stick with that. Next year, it needs to be a two night format. They have to. Because no one wants to sit in a show for eight hours. You'll get tired and burnt out. So I hope they do a two night format. I think that would be pretty cool. But we'll see if they continue that. But other than that, man. This show was enjoyable. Night two was fantastic. Overall, WrestleMania for me, night one and two was very enjoyable. Very, very enjoyable. It was good to see the crowd again. And I'm just looking forward to seeing where these storylines, you know, play up because backlash is next month. So we'll see how these storylines play out. But I want to know, comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite match of the night? For me, obviously, the main event. Was the fav- my favorite match of the night? Daniel Bryan versus Roman versus Edge, best in that match of the night for me. And I also want to know: Do y'all think they'll have another rematch? Do y'all think they'll have uh, another rematch at Backlash? They can say, "Hey, Jay Uso got involved. If Jay Uso wouldn't have gotten involved, this would be a different match." So maybe they have like a a triple threat Hell in a Cell match. Well, nah, they'll say that for a Hell in a Cell pay per view. But they'll do something to keep Jey Uso out. I don't know. I do want. I'm not gonna lie to you. I want them to continue the storyline at least for one more pay per view. At least for Backlash. I want them to continue the storyline because this was great. You know what I'm saying? So I, I I'll, I'll be interested to see how they play this out. I'm really looking forward to uh, SmackDown this week. See how they play things out. But I appreciate all the love and support, man. Road to 40K. I appreciate y'all kicking it with me. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.